Today, I'd like to talk about a technique called PPV vitroplasty, where I use the peritoneal lining from the abdominal cavity to help create the vaginal canal. To help you understand what the peritoneum is, let me give you a simple comparison. Imagine that your abdominal cavity is like a room, a space that holds important internal organs like your intestines, liver, stomach, and spleen. The outer wall of that room is made up of your skin and abdominal muscles. But if you look Look at the insides of the room. There's a lining like wallpaper that covers everything inside. That's the peritoneum. This tissue is very thin, smooth, and naturally moist. It's made of special cells that secrete a small amount of clear fluid, which helps your internal organs glide smoothly when your body moves. And because of these natural properties, the peritoneum can be used to help reconstruct a vaginal lining that has moisture and softness. The use of peritoneum in vaginoplasty actually started in cisgender women who were born with a vaginal canal, a condition called MRKS syndrome. Later on, surgeons adapt the technique and apply it in gender-affirming surgery for transgender women. That's how PPV or peritoneum put through vaginoplasty became an option for new vaginal creation. The surgery involves lifting a white sheet of peritoneum from the abdominal wall using laparoscopic technique. Once we prepare enough tissue, we roll and shape it into a soft tube, which becomes part of the vaginal canal. In previous episodes, I've explained two other types of vaginoplasty, one using skin grafts and one using segment of colon. So now let's look at how these three types compare, especially when it comes to natural lubrication. A new vagina made from skin graft doesn't have any gland or cells that produce moisture. That means patients who have this type must use lubricating gel every time they dilate or have intercourse. On the other hand, a new vagina made from colon has natural mucus producing cells. This mucus works similarly to cisgender vaginal discharge and keeps excellent long-term lubrication. Patients may still need a small amount of gel, but usually much less often. Now for PPV, the peritoneum produces a thin watery fluid. It helps keep the new vagina moist, but it's not thick or slippery enough to fully protect against friction. So in reality, PPV falls somewhere between the other two. Not as dry as skin graft, but not as lubricated as colon. That's why I always explain clearly to patients who are considering PPV that this lining is more delicate. It's not resistant to frequent or strong friction. So it's very important that they continue to use lubricating gel every single time, not just in the early stages, but long term as well. To summarize, if you want a new vagina that produces thick natural lubrication and is better suited for regular dilation or sexual activity without always needing extra gel, colon vaginoplasty may be your best choice. But if you prefer not to undergo bowel surgery or you have conditions that makes colon surgery too risky, for example, a high BMI over 30, then PPV is still a good alternative. In the next episode, I explain more about the surgical steps I use to shape the polydium lining into a functional vaginal canal. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.